Hello, I'm here with Matt Medeiros, systems engineer, and as it turns out, a DevOps human. Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to be with me today. Great to be here. So speaking of DevOps, what does DevOps mean for you? Um, so DevOps for me is less a tool set and more a mindset. It's about uh, working collaboratively, uh, working effectively, and driving solutions, making data-driven decisions. Um, it's a way of delivering software around rapid releases, rapid prototyping, um, gathering metrics, and testing. So we were talking off camera about something relatively new to the kind of DevOps practice, and that's the idea of compliance, specifically compliance as code, and something that's traditionally kind of been an afterthought or at the end of any given workflow or pipeline now being incorporated into that. Give me your thoughts on bringing compliance into any sort of development process and where you see that going from here, benefits and, and how you might do it yourself. Well, so it's really interesting when you talk about compliance. Thinking about compliance as code, that's sort of a new idea, right? It's a little bit different. It's a little bit similar to the conversation we had about infrastructure as code maybe 10 years ago. It was just, oh, that's difficult and unmanageable. There's no like best practices around it. But it really makes sense to be able to shorten the iteration loop and drive compliance uh, as you're doing software development, right? And if your compliance is code-driven, then you can also rapidly adjust your compliance definitions. So it really makes sense to codify this. I mean, it's compliance code, right? So codifying it, iterating over it, and shortening the iteration loops allows for better compliance, less headaches for the engineers who then have to go back and retrofit things after some review, after six, six months of development work. And nobody um, wants to do that. Yeah. And uh, instead, it becomes part of your sort of continuous, harmonious process of everyone moving together in the same direction at the same time using overlapping tool sets. It's really so, interesting. You've been in the Chef community about a year now, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. And your broader journey with DevOps and then your specific experience with the Chef community. Sounds like compliance is kind of new to that experience. Tell yeah. us a little bit about your journey with DevOps and, and specifically the Chef community. Um, so I've been building sort of scalable internet things for a decade plus in various uh, different companies in the New York metropolitan area. I've worked in startups, I've worked in enterprise, and I've worked in sort of incubator labs, whether acquired startups or spun off independent organizations. Um, started, you know, working with just pure operations and then building operations support teams and then really getting into sort of scalability, resilience, and uh, infrastructure as code. Um, I've used all the infrastructure management, uh, configuration management tool sets. Um, I really like Chef. It's got a really strong community. Um, the tooling is really intuitive um, and working with it a lot over the past year, um, it's only sort of deepened my appreciation for the elegance of a lot of the solutions. So, you know, it's always a thing of you look back six months and you go, oh, why did I make this terrible decision? Um, <laughs> but that's, that just happens because you're getting better. You're going further down your sort of DevOps Kung Fu journey. Yep. And, uh, you know, just keeping an open mind and continuously improving, um, you're going to be able to make better decisions down the road. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about driving value for the customer. You want to get, the business wants to deliver features to the customer. You want to empower the business. And with continuous integration and all these sort of DevOps tools, we're really going back to more of a lean uh, or agile or Deming sort of process of focus on the things that work, drive value, iterate quickly, and get things out to the customer. Now, as part of that, you talked about keeping an open mind. Yeah. Um, and being open, obviously, to new ways of doing things, potentially keeping things a little bit weird. Yeah. Talk a little bit about um, how important open source is, and especially how important open source is to the ability to collaborate with people both inside your given organization and outside of your organization. Sure. So um, when something is broken, you want to be able to look under the hood and fix it. And that is a key factor in open source. So being able to understand how things work can help you think better. It can help you contribute back to the community, fix bugs, add features, things like this. Um, and you know, with the licensing models, it allows organizations to kind of experiment with these things at, uh, at low risk. You know, you're not buying a solution out of the box that's going to cost you X amount of dollars and then wind up having to throw it away, right? Um, 
being able to build and add to things, saying, oh, well, why doesn't this feature exist? Build it, you know, learn about the code, work with people, um, put things forward. Um, things like GitHub, you know, which didn't really exist as a public thing, you know, yep. social coding 10 years ago, yep. um, allows you to share things, it allows you to learn, it allows you to shortcut your own success by leveraging the work of others, and then, you know, ultimately, you want to be able to try to give back to that community. Well, Matt, I think you're a very smart guy, regardless. And I really appreciate you taking the time chatting with me today. Thank you so very much. Great to be here. Thanks for your time.